Hello everybody. I'm here today in this video to talk to you about maintenance and upkeep and even giving the uh, Ultra Skiff a little tune-up. It may be the end of the season, it may be the beginning of the season, you may be about to put it in the stores, taking it out of stores, it may be the middle of the season, but it's never a bad time to check out your Ultra Skiff and your accessories for possible things that may prevent something more serious down the road. The more serious things are related to the accessories, not so much to the hull of the skiff, but we're gonna explore both of them in this video. We're gonna start with the most important things and then go down from there. The most important thing, and you may not have known this, is actually related to the uh, pedestal base and the pedestal pole, if you have a pin style seat mount. Let me show you. So this is a pin style pedestal pole right here. I think this is the most commonly used type. And the biggest problem with these is that this extension of the pole right here will oxidize and start to rust. And that is seriously bad news because once you go to put it, if it has rust on it, and you put it into the bushing on this seven by seven seat base, well, guess what? there's a slim chance you're getting it out. Um, this has happened to me probably about four times over the past five years. And I've, over the past year, I'm starting to get reports from customers that it's happening to them too. It's really important that if you notice any rust on the end, end of these pin extensions, that you sand it down. What I do is I actually use a brush like this on a drill and I sand all that oxidation right off of it and then it goes in really smooth. Or get a piece of sandpaper if you don't have that and sand it off that way. Uh, what happens is if you put it in there and it doesn't come out, trust me, you're not getting out. The only way to get it out if it happens is to get a heat gun, okay, hot air gun. And what I do is I put this on the ground and I point the heat gun at the back of it like this. And mind you, this is already, you know, installed in it. And I just let it heat up. And I wait about 15 minutes. It'll be red hot. I'll get a towel. I'll grab this. Um, I'll put my feet on it like this. Pull the pole. If it doesn't come out, you need more heat. Just keep moving that heat gun around there. What you're doing is you're actually heating up and melting this... Uh, plastic bushing, this nylon bushing in there, and, and when it starts to get uh, hot enough, eventually the pole will come out of it. Now, unfortunately, the bushing will be ruined after that. I, I've never done this once where the bushing was uh, still usable. Fortunately, the pole just won't go back in, into it after you melt it like that. Um, can you get a replacement bushing if that happens? Uh, some manufacturers do. I know that Atwood, uh, they do keep uh, just the bushings so you can get that from them for a couple bucks. But some of the other brands, uh, you know, they just, they get them from China and they just don't have the bushings. Uh, so you have to buy a whole new base. Disappointing, but definitely preventable. Always keep the rust off these pin style mounts. Let's move on to the next thing. And that would be the motor. The next most commonly uh, piece of your arsenal uh, that can have an issue would definitely be uh, the motor. What you want to do is take off the prop. Some will have a piece like this on the end. The other one will just have a, a nylon lock nut. Just get a wrench and take it off. And you want to remove the prop and you want to check it for fishing line or any debris that may be in there. So taking this one off looks fine to me. Nothing in there, but if you have fishing line in there, it'll definitely slow your motor down. And if that fishing line gets into the seal right there, it could actually start to wear down that seal and that could cause water to come into your uh, motor unit and then you're in big trouble. So definitely keep an eye on that. After you take off the prop, if you never have before, never hurts, spray a little WD on it. Pop it back on. washer, got the nut here, a 
you just want to hand tighten these good to go so that's pretty much it for the motor the only other thing I can recommend for the motor is if you have uh, connections on the end make sure they're not oxidized sand them down get them nice and shiny and if you have a track plug like this I definitely recommend that you grease the inside of the connectors especially if you're using this in salt water uh, this is a waterproof grease they sell this at hardware stores right here and I just squirt some grease in there every so often and this type of grease uh, does not affect the conductivity of the electricity at all and it will keep those connections uh, free from oxidation and rust and will definitely help you in the long run okay now let's talk about the ultra stiff hull itself and what we may need to keep an eye on or possibly do uh, a tune-up on the most common thing would be the bungees these generally last a couple years um, and then after a lot of use them getting wet the bungees start to lose their elasticity uh, so super easy fix though uh, this is the same bungee cord that's used in most kayaks uh, you go down to your local kayak store and they usually have giant rolls of this stuff and I go down the, the kayak store down the street and they cost they cost 10 cents a foot so super easy to replace and if you can't find it in your area just let us know and we'll send you some uh, new bungees each bungee piece is about a foot long okay and you're just held on uh, with a couple tiny little knots like this that's it so you just tie a knot put one hole in bring it out tie a knot on the other end like that and boom you'd have a fresh new bungee on there and you can make them as tight as you want even the ones you have on that if they feel like they're losing their, their elasticity you can always just untie one end shorten it tie that knot again and that will shorten the length of the bungee and make it tighter so this stuff 10 cents a foot or give us a call and we'd be happy to send you some let's get on to the next thing the next thing to keep an eye on would possibly be um, a bolt starting to loosen up the ultra skiff has 33 different mold in threaded inserts that they're metal threads that are molded into the plastic they're awesome but you definitely um, you know want to take care of them the only way I've ever damaged one is by stripping it and uh, we're gonna get to that in a second so where have I noticed uh, a loose bolt after years of use the most common place is definitely the transom uh, on the transom plates spin this guy up for real quick give you a better look at it so like here's the rear transom plate right here there's a plate with three bolts on the outside and there's a plate with three bolts on the inside of the transom as well so what would cause these bolts to loosen uh, the vibration in fact that goes for all the bolts um, transporting it on a trailer in the back of your truck all the vibration bumps in the road could eventually start to loosen a bolt and then from there on you know the more vibration the looser it could possibly get uh, with this these could uh, loosen up on you uh, mainly same thing but also from the motor all the vibration from the motor using the motor could uh, loosen these bolts it's a rarity but it's definitely something that you want to keep an eye out for pop them out really quick and after you take it off uh, the, if there's any dirt or mud in there you could wash it off grab some WD all these uh, inserts on the boats are either stainless or brass so you don't really have to do this but you know and after you do that then you can just pop it back on Actually, this uh, just reminded me of something very important that I want to share with you guys. And that is if you ever take a bolt out of an insert, when you go to put it back in, use a handheld screwdriver to start it, okay? Now I, was, I just didn't do that, that was irresponsible of me. 
But the reason I say to do this is so you don't uh, accidentally strip the threads on an insert. You know, an electric drill or electric screwdriver has a lot of torque. So if you go in from the wrong angle or too fast, you can miss those threads. And once you miss a thread and start to torque it in there, that insert's done. You cannot replace a mold in threaded insert. Okay, that's why I like to say, if you ever take a bolt out, take your time, and when you put it back in, start it with a handheld screwdriver so you don't accidentally strip it. Once you get the thread going, then you can get your screwdriver and top it off. Now you hear that sound? That's the torque setting. You never want to go full torque on these electric drills. Set it low. I like to set mine at four or eight down there on the torque setting. That way, when it starts to get tight, it goes into that mode, and it tightens it up without risking stripping the bolt. So, if you go too hard on this, you could strip uh, you know, the Phillips head insert on, on these bolts. Yeah, you just go down to the hardware store and buy a new one, but if it's stripped, getting it out could be a challenge. So, definitely a good tip. Let's talk about some other inserts on the boat. There's the cleats right here. Just pop that out. Spray WD if you want to. And put them back in. And like I said, I'm gonna be good this time. And I'm going to start these threads by hand. and then I'm gonna tighten them down. Okay, now let's talk about the uh, hinges really quick. These are bolted on on the inside of the door with um, nylon lock nuts. So you never have to worry about them. They're never gonna loosen up on you, but Never seen one of these loosen up either, but I suppose it is possible. Or they d definitely get a lot of um, abuse and moisture um, on them because they're so high up. So, you know, it's not a bad idea to spray a little WD-40 in there, you know, if you want to. Put them back on. Start them by hand. And you'll notice these hinges are plastic. So, I'm going to give you a little tip here. Whenever you're tightening bolts on a hinge definitely go with a really low torque setting okay because if it's if you really torque them in hard you can send that bolt right through the plastic hinge you know right through that hole and then you're kind of stripping the hinge sort of it'll still work but won't be as strong as it was before if that happens just let us know be happy to send you out a new hinge they're uh, quite inexpensive and there you go Okay, so like I said, really low torque setting there whenever you're gonna tighten the hinge. Just like that, as low as you can go. Beautiful. And then you got other components. You got the J-hooks down there. Tighten them up if you need to. Um, on the back of the boat, we have the utility inserts. Right here, there's four of them. They really rarely ever loosen up um, and uh, you know, not a bad idea to WD up if you want to. But that just about does it. Let's talk about the pedestal mount really quick. Um, the only thing I've ever seen on a pedestal mount are the bolts underneath loosening up um, over time. And in which case, just ratchet them down again and you're good to go. Well, that just about covers everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot. Anyone has any questions, just uh, contact us, info at ultraskip.com. Visit our website for more informative videos, www.ultraskip.com. Thanks a lot for watching, and as always, everybody, tight lines.